Hey guys, Adam here from Sleep HQ again. I wanted to do another video for you today showing you how to get your data from your CPAP machine into Sleep HQ. For the last week, we've been working with our beta test users and we've had some really great feedback on the best ways to get your data uploaded successfully. So today, I'm gonna to talk to you about some of the common problems that people had and also what you can do to make sure that you get your data uploaded successfully. Uh, I'm on my Windows machine today. The last video I did was on an Apple computer, so I wanted to do the video today on Windows so you can see exactly what it's going to look like if you're, on, if you're using a Windows computer too. Okay, so to start with, I've got two windows open. On the left-hand side here, I've got my internet browser. I'm using Firefox, but you can use Chrome, Safari, uh, any of the Edge, any of the main browsers will work. On the right hand side here, I've got my file explorer. So this is just a regular Windows file explorer that you would use to look around the files that are on your hard drive. When you plug your SD card in, you should see it come up down the left hand side here. Uh, I'm on a, a virtual computer, so I can't plug an SD card straight in. So what I've done instead is I've just copied my SD card into the documents folder, but it's gonna be exactly the same. What I can see here is exactly what you should see when you click on your SD card in the drives list down the left hand side over here. So I've got my SD card and then over in my other window, I've gone to the data imports page of the Sleep HQ app. Okay, now for most people, what you're gonna to wanna to do is just select all of the contents of your SD card and drag them straight in. So I can do that by clicking on the top folder, holding down shift, clicking on the bottom one, and then just dragging everything straight across into this Sleep HQ upload window like that. And that's gonna work for 90% of the people out there. Uh, one thing to watch out for, I think some one, one place where some people have been going wrong is you don't want to select the actual SD card itself and try and drag that into Sleep HQ. Uh, that doesn't seem to work on Windows. It sometimes works on Mac, but it's, it's a bit temperamental. So what you want to do is select the contents of your SD card and drag that into Sleep HQ instead because that will work for everyone all the time. Now, if you've got more than about six months worth of data on your SD card, uh, it may be too much to upload in one go, so you're gonna to wanna to upload it in chunks. So if that's the case, if that's you, what you're gonna to wanna to do is select everything on your SD card that is not the data log folder. So I've clicked on settings, held down shift and clicked on the bottom one, and I'm now gonna drag just those files and folders across into my upload window. And you can see I've now added 45 files. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into my data log folder and there's a folder in here for every day that I've used my CPAP machine. So I'm gonna go down to my most recent data and I'm gonna select, say the last four or five days, let's say six days worth of data, and I'm going to drag that in like that. And now it's telling me that I'm uploading 105 files. So once I'm happy with that, I can say begin upload. And those 105 files that I selected are now being uploaded. Now, I can do as many chunks as I need to to get all my data in. Uh, I would recommend starting small, starting with sort of five, 10 days worth of data at a time, and then expand out as you get more comfortable with the process. I've been finding I can do about six months worth of data pretty comfortably uh, on, on most internet connections with most machines. Uh, but again, it depends on the power of your computer. If your computer doesn't have a lot of memory, it might be that it can only handle doing smaller chunks of files. So start small and build up, and then you're gonna have the best success. So. That upload is now processing and it's telling me that I'm processing data from the 25th to the 30th of January. You can see down here in my data log folder, all of these numbers are dates. So this one's saying 2022-0125. So this folder here is the data from the 25th of January, 2022. And that one's already been imported. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna grab another chunk of data, the previous one like that, and we need a few more days this time and I'm gonna drag them in. Now the important thing to remember here when you're dragging in these chunks out of your data log folder is that you always have to upload the settings and anything else that is in the top level of your uh, SD card. So I need to drag them in every time. The reason for that is because these are the files that tell us what machine to associate that data with. The data log folder, all that is, is it's the actual data itself but you might have multiple machines. You might have a home machine and a travel machine. And so we need to we need these other files so that every time you do an upload, we know which machine that data actually belongs to. So I've dragged those files in now and I can, if I go over to my upload window, I can scroll down and I can see there they are there. I've got my identification, STR and settings folder. They, they might look slightly different depending on which machine you're using, but whatever is in that top level folder that's not the data log, that's the files that you need to upload. So I'm now gonna say, begin upload on my second chunk of files. And so that's now gonna process. So the things to watch out for here, 
Uh, don't try and drag the entire SD card itself across into the uploader uh, because that will fail. Uh, it seems to just make Windows hang and it just doesn't work very well. So don't do that. Make sure you're selecting the actual contents of the SD card instead. Uh, the other thing to make sure you're doing is just selecting chunks of files at a time, especially if you've tried and you've had some issues with uploading, just use smaller chunks and then that's going to be the most successful way to do it. Anytime when you're uploading the data, we're going to try and show you what dates uh, the data contained. So that's going to make it easy for you. I can see now I've got the 13th to the 24th of January, 25th to the 30th of January. So the next time I do an upload, I just know I need to do everything from before the 13th of January. So you can check those dates as you're going to. Now, hopefully once you've got the bulk of your data uploaded, all you're going to need to do is upload the most recent few days. So it's going to be a really quick process for you. You can go in there, go into your data log folder, if you do uh, duplicate some of those days, like say I was gonna upload now from the 10th to the 13th of January. Let's do this as a little demonstration. We're gonna grab everything from the 10th to, let's grab it to the 16th of January. So we're gonna double up on some of that data that we've already imported. And now I'm gonna grab my top level folders because I always need to drag them in. All right, so we're adding 139 files and I'm gonna say begin upload. Now what you'll see happen there is it jumped straight up to 80% because it had already uploaded most of those files. So it was really quick to do that. It hasn't actually duplicated those files on the system. They're only stored once. Uh, it's showing that I'm uploading the data from the 10th to the 17th of January, but really we're only processing sort of the missing days effectively from the 10th to the 12th because the, everything from the 13th onwards was already processed. So that upload should be really quick. So again, going forward, when you're coming to upload your most recent data, you can just grab the, the, most, the most recent sort of three, four, five days, however long it's been since you've done an upload, drag them all in, make sure you grab your identification files as well, and then it doesn't matter if you've duplicated some of them because we're, the system is just gonna figure out which ones it actually needs to process every time it runs. Uh, so that's it, I've now done three chunks out of my data log folder. Uh, I can keep going for as many times as I need to to get all that data uploaded. Hopefully if you're able to do some bigger chunks where you can do at least a few months at a time. Um, it will take a little while the very first time you do it, but once your data is in, then it's gonna be a really quick process to, to just be sort of adding small pieces to that folder uh, as you go forward and as you sort of continue with your, with your therapy. Uh, so they're the main things to watch out for. One other really important thing is this select files button. D this button is really only here for people who can't do drag and drop. If you're on a device where you can't drag and drop like an iPhone, uh, then you're gonna need to use the select files button. The problem with it though is that you can generally, depending on your operating system and depending on the browser that you're using, you might only be able to select one folder at a time and you may not be able to select the files. So you can see here, I've gone into my SD card, but I'm actually missing the identification files. And that's unfortunately just the way that the select files buttons work with browsers. Uh, we're not able to let you select a folder and a file. So, uh, and again, it depends on the browser that you're on. Um, the drag and drop method that I did before is gonna be the best way for pretty much everyone to do it. So that's, that's the absolute recommended way. If you're on something like an iPhone where you just can't drag and drop, go and check out the mobile upload video that I did. It is possible to do it, and you're gonna use that select files button. It's a slightly different process though, so go and watch the video on how to upload the data if you are doing it from an iPhone because it's, it's a slightly different process. So go and check that one out if that's how you're gonna be uploading your data. If you're on a computer, if you're on a Windows or an Apple machine, then I would absolutely say get the two windows going with your file browser on one side, the internet browser on the other side, and drag and drop the files in. That's gonna work the best for pretty much everyone out there. So if you have that as an option, that is absolutely my recommendation for the best way to do it. Uh, all right, thanks guys. I think that wraps it up for today. Hopefully that gives you some really good tips on how to get your data in. If you have any problems, make sure you reach out and let us know so we can, uh, we can help you out and continue to kind of refine this process to make it as smooth as, uh, as we possibly can for everyone. All right, thanks guys.